A lot of the work that I've been doing recently is about discursive psychology, um, or really the, the stories that we tell ourselves about our lives and the impact that those have on our behaviour. And so what I was looking at in the workshop is some of the stories we tell ourselves about climate change. So for instance, the story that we have a window of opportunity and we must act now before that window closes. It was a definitely a fairly strong emotional reaction because I was talking about the moment when that window closes. So people say we have 100 months or 70 months or we have until 2016. But whatever it is, it has a definite time when it comes to a close. And all the indications are right now that things are not changing fast enough. So we're just talking about that moment at the tipping point, beyond the point of no return, when whatever we do about climate change is not going to make a difference. And at that point, what do we then do? Well, the implication for transition groups is to simultaneously think about reducing carbon emissions, but at the same time thinking about what happens if mitigation of climate change fails. And we have to adapt to a climate that's very different from the climate that we have now, a much more unsavable climate where it's difficult to grow food. So, so we need to be simultaneously thinking about mitigation and adaptation to an unstable climate. So what's so great about transition is most of the things that you do in transition do tackle both of those things simultaneously. So something which doesn't would be something like carbon capture and storage. So the government's prepared to spend a billion pounds on producing an infrastructure for carbon capture and storage. But if we go past the tipping point, that entire infrastructure is just a massive waste. We can't possibly use it. So instead of that, things like planting trees on floodplains um, and creating cycle paths and um, growing vegetables, getting seals and growing vegetables, all of these things can reduce carbon emissions and can help us prepare for an unstable climate. And these are the kinds of things that the transition is doing. In terms of reaching the larger population, I think education is, has a critically important role to play in that because the students who come through university go on to positions of power in the society afterwards. So they become leaders. They become leaders perhaps of their own lives or leaders of their companies or leaders of their communities or they could become political leaders. And if each of them has some kind of sustainability literacy, some kind of ecological awareness, if each of them thinks critically about the trajectory that society is on, then they will be in a position to influence people.